Let's determine. So let's continue our discussion on the total binding energy of atoms and let's look at the following example. So determine the A total binding energy and B the total binding energy per nucleon for the copper 63 atom assuming that the mass of the copper is 62.91367 unified atomic mass units and that the copper is a neutral atom. Adam. So let's begin with part A. To calculate the total binding energy, that basically means we want to calculate how much energy was released when this copper atom was formed. And to calculate that, we want to find the discrepancy in mass, the change in mass. So, the first step is determining how many protons, neutrons, and electrons we have in the atom. To calculate the protons, we simply find what the atomic number of copper is. We take the periodic table and that gives us an atomic number of 29. So that means we have 29 protons. Since we have a neutral atom, the protons equals the electrons, so we have 29 electrons also. Now, what about the neutrons? To calculate calculate the number of neutrons in the nucleus, we simply take 63 and subtract the atomic number. So we have 63 minus 29 and that gives us 34 neutrons. Now, our atomic mass of a single proton is given by this value, the mass of our neutron is given by this, and that of the electron is given by this. So now we want to calculate the total mass of all these constituents and then compare that mass to the actual mass of our copper. So if we multiply these out and then add these three quantities, we get 63.52152. So notice that this is greater than this and that means the copper atom is actually more stable and lower in energy than the sum of all these constituents. And so now to calculate the energy, we have to first calculate the change in mass between these two quantities. So delta M, the change in mass is equal to the mass of the sum of all the constituents minus our copper atom. So we take this quantity and subtract this and we get about 0.60785 unified atomic mass units. Now, to actually use the rest mass energy equation, we have to transform unified atomic mass units into kilograms. So we multiply this by our conversion factor and we get 1.009 times 10 to negative 27 kilograms. So this is basically how much mass was released in the form of energy when these constituents came together to to form our single copper atom. So to calculate how much energy this change in mass actually corresponds to, which is given by the total binding energy, we use this equation, which is basically the rest mass energy. So the change in energy is equal to the change in mass multiplied by the square of the speed of light in a vacuum. So we plug in our constant, square that multiplied by the change in mass in kilograms, and we get about 9.081 times 10 to negative 11 joules of energy. And usually we have to express this in mega electron volts. So we divide this by 1.6 times 10 to negative 9 and we get 568 mega electron volts is the quantity of energy that is released into the environment when our copper atom forms. Now let's move on to part B. To find the total binding energy per nucleon, we basically take the total binding energy we calculated in part A and divide that by the total number of nucleons, which is the sum of the protons and neutrons. So we have 34 neutrons and 29 protons and that gives us 63 nucleons. So 568 mega electron volts divided by 63 nucleons we get about 9.02 mega electron volts per one nucleon is 
the total binding energy that is released per nucleon.